To you I lift up my soul, O my God. In you I have trusted. Let me not be put to shame, nor let my enemies exult over me, and let none who hope in you be put to shame. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. At this beginning time of Lent, my dear brothers, Lent of Advent, <laughs> as we're preparing for Christmas time uh, and the season of Advent, the new liturgical year for ourselves. Let's now uh, ask our God to bless our Advent wreath as a reminder of these weeks leading up to Christmas. Lord God, your church joyfully awaits the coming of its Savior, who enlightens our hearts and dispels the ignorance and the darkness of ignorance and sin. Pour forth your blessings upon us as we light the candles of this wreath. May their light reflect the splendor of Christ, who is Lord forever and ever. Dear brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Grant your faithful, we pray, Almighty God, the resolve to run forth to meet your Christ with righteous deeds at his coming, so that gathered at his right hand they may be worthy to possess the heavenly kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. You, Lord, are our Father. Our Redeemer, you are named forever. Why do you let us wander, O Lord, from your ways, and harden our hearts so that we fear not, fear you not? Return for the sake of your servants, the tribes of your heritage. Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down, with the mountains quaking before you. While you wrought awesome deeds, we could not hope for, such as they had not heard of from of old. No ear has ever heard, no eye has ever seen any God but you doing such deeds for those who wait for him. Would that you might meet us doing right, that we were mindful of, our, of you in our ways. Behold, you are angry and we, were, and we are sinful. All of us have become like unclean people. All, all our good deeds are like polluted rags. We have all withered like weeds, and our guilt carries us away like the wind. There is none who calls upon your name, who rouses himself to cling to you. For you have hidden your face from us, and have delivered us up to our guilt. Yet, O oh Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay, and you are the potter. 
We are all the work of your hands. The word of the Lord. Amen. Responsorial Psalm. Lord, make us turn to you. Let us see your face and we shall be saved. O shepherd of Israel, hearken from your throne upon the cher cherubim. Shine forth, rouse your power, and come to save us. Once again, O Lord of hosts, look down from heaven and see. Take care of this vine and protect what your right hand has planted. The Son of Man, whom you yourself made strong. May your help be with the man of your right hand, with the Son of Man, whom you yourself made strong. Then we will no more withdraw from you. Give, give us new life, and we will call upon your name. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always on your account for the grace of God bestowed on you in, Jesus Christ, in Christ Jesus, that in him you were enriched in every way with all discourse and, and all knowledge as the testimony to Christ was confirmed among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift, as you wait for the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ, he will keep you firm to the end, irreproachable on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful, and by him you are called to fellowship with, this, with his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The word of the Lord. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, Show us, Lord, your love and grant us your salvation. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus said to his disciples, Be watchful. Be alert. You do not know when the time will come. It is like a man traveling abroad. He leaves home and places his servants in charge, each with his own work, and orders the gatekeeper to be on the watch. Watch, therefore. You do not know when the Lord of the house is coming, whether in the evening or at midnight, or at cock crow, or in the morning. May he not come suddenly and find you sleeping. What I say to you, I say to all, watch. The Gospel of the Lord. So we've begun the uh, season of Advent, this new part of the year for us uh, to look toward Christmas. We don't, as, as Catholics, we don't celebrate Christmas yet. <laughs> Watch out, the whole, if you go out in the world, they're all celebrating Christmas already. All right? As soon as uh, we got through Thanksgiving Day, Black Friday, and then today, it's all Christmas from now until Christmas Day, and then right after that, they're done and they're working on Valentine's Day, right? 
And so that's not us. We're, we're, we are a people who are in anticipation of Christmas. We have these four weeks to make ourselves ready and to think on what this means for us to celebrate Christmas. You know, one of the, uh, the great phrases that we use whenever we talk about Christmas itself uh, with our faith is talking about the arrival of our Savior. Unto us a Savior is born. Sa savior from what? Sa savior from what? See, if we as, uh, as Catholics, as Christians, if we don't understand that we are personally and collectively in need of a Savior, then we can just rush into Christmas. What is the point of waiting for a Savior to arrive if he has no meaning for us on a personal level? I'm okay. You're okay. What's the big deal? I'm a good person. I don't really need Jesus, I guess. You know, one of the things, um, if you ever work with anyone uh, or you yourself have gone through the, the 12 steps, uh, for those that struggle with addiction, they go through this 12-step model. And uh, part of that is coming to an understanding that I can't do this on my own. I can't live this life by myself without some higher power and authority stepping in that I surrender myself over to and that I need to lean on those around me to support me. And together we get to sobriety and health and holiness and, and the things that we're shooting for. But until you get there, until you're willing with your own heart to surrender over and say, I need salvation from the outside. I can't do this on my own. You just live in that denial, don't you? We, we do that. If we are not in need of Jesus to save us from our sins, save us from death. And this has to be, to be something that is deep in the heart. It has to move from here to here. Remember, you've heard before, that's the longest distance <laughs> for the human person, right? So here, from the intellect of, I know that Jesus saves us from our sins, to, I need a Savior. And in my heart, it just aches for Him. You know, to, for us to pray for that grace from God, to say that, I, I, I need you, Lord. Part of being watchful, as we heard from the gospel, being watchful and waiting, is this anticipation of the arrival of Jesus in our lives in a way that transforms us and changes us. And you hear it uh, a bit in the, the first reading. There's these three images coming from the prophet Isaiah. That we can ask ourselves this question. Do any of these three match up for me where I'm at in my spiritual life right now? Uh, or do I need to change towards any of these three? You, Lord, are our Father, our Redeemer. You are named forever. Why do you let us wander, O Lord, from your ways? Why do you let us wander, Lord? Have you ever been lost before? Like pre-GPS days? Most of us that are older ones in the room are going to remember these days where you didn't have a map and you didn't have a GPS you had a scratch piece of paper from writing down that your friends say, hey, please meet us here at this new address where we live. And you're in your car and you're, you're trying to remember the map that you looked at before you left or somebody else has it in the car. And you just have the notepad pad of paper. And I just remember uh, going to the Twin Cities to try to find friends down there. And uh, I don't know, it's, it's not small town Minnesota when you get to the Twin Cities. You get off at the wrong exit, I don't know how many times, I, I, and I, this just unnerves me. I get lost and I start sweating like crazy, 
and I get panicky on the inside, and I'm usually driving alone to go visit friends because I'm a pretty soon. But, but this, I'm thinking of my college days and my high school days of just trying to go find places and fly, find people. You get off on the wrong exit, and it's like a half hour until you can find where you were supposed to be and then sort of get back on track. That whole time, it's just painful, isn't it? I need to be rescued. I need someone to step in and tell me I'm okay. And then finally, I get the nerve up to pull over in the strange part of town and ask for directions. Oh, yeah, yeah. All you got to do is turn here, turn here, and you're right there. Ah. <laughs> That's the heart, isn't it? I have wandered from your ways, O oh Lord. I am lost and I cannot be found. <laughs> I need you to find me, Lord. You who search me out. I need a savior. So are we someone who's wandering a little bit in our spiritual lives? We've kind of gotten off track. We're a little lost and when suddenly the tragedy of, oh my gosh, I don't know where I am, kicks in, it gets a little panicky, doesn't it? And to turn to the Lord, asking the Lord for that grace. Lord, I need your grace. I need you to hear my voice and shine your light so I know where to go. The second image, why do you let us harden our hearts so that we fear you not? To harden our hearts. Have you ever played with uh, dried dough, like Play-Doh that gets super dry, and you're trying to mold it into something, and just all by itself, it's just crumbling into pieces. <laughs> It's like picking up a cookie that you really, really want. You just want to eat it. You know it's supposed to be chewy. And it turns out just, it just explodes, right? God desires to enter into our lives and to mold us like the potter who wants to mold clay. And that means we have to have a soft heart, a malleable heart that the Lord can move around and stretch us and help us to really see his ways. Do I have a softened heart to hearing the Lord's voice, being open to change, being open to see that maybe the way that I've been acting recently is not of God's ways? Or am I hardened? You know what? I, I'm in defense mode. I just have to survive on my own because God, I just feel like I can't trust you. And our heart is hardened to his voice wanting to speak into us. The third image. Oh, let's see here. Behold, you are angry and we are sinful. Behold, Lord, you are angry and we are sinful. All of us have become like unclean people all our good deeds are like polluted rags. I know, okay, so this is a little harsh, isn't it? Uh, many of us have uh, grown up under the years now of a repetitive message that Jesus loves us. Jesus is so great. It's hard to imagine an angry Jesus, <laughs> an angry God. For some of us, um, we push so hard against that image of God being angry with us that it is a little unsettling then when you look page after page in the Bible and you see quite regularly the Lord does have anger towards his people. Both in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. But it's different than the anger that we're very accustomed to, which is kind of a, a, a sinful anger where... We would have to fear the person because they're just on a war path and they're out to harm us. And they're out to teach us a, 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 a lesson in the negative. But this is not how the Lord is when it comes to anger. I don't know how you feel when, when someone is not doing something that they should be doing. And as a parent or as a spouse or as a friend... As a coworker, you just so you so love them and you so long for things to be right. 
that there's this anger on the inside of like, no, don't, don't do that. Don't be that way. This is the kind of anger that God has for us. His is a righteous, a good and holy anger that longs for your and my conversion of heart, that longs to see us living in his pathways where he can relax and settle down, you know, and, and we know we can be at peace because we know he's at peace. This is the right fear of the Lord that we're supposed to have as a kind of reverence for God. And to understand that it's okay for God to be angry with me every once in a while. I, I deserve it. <laughs> when I think through of the things that I've done in my life that I wish that I hadn't done, the things that I need to repent of and to change in my behavior patterns, I long for that peace myself. I get angry at myself. I... I don't like certain choices that I have made and am making, and I want that fixed. And to allow that, that sentiment of God's love, again, it's, a, it's in the core of the heart, right? It's different from just simply, I know I need to do better. Okay, fair enough. We all know we need to do better. But to have an integration in the heart, that watchfulness, that longing, the conversion of heart, is that, that softened heart to God's ways is to say, I need you, Lord. I am a sinner. And without you, that will not change. I need your grace because I've been trying it on my own and it's just not getting fixed without you. I can will it all I want and that just doesn't seem to do it. So I need you as a savior in my life. I need you as Lord in my life. You see how this, uh, these images of Advent and the prophet Isaiah, the longing, the, the waiting, the arrival of Jesus at Christmas, the arrival of our God who enters into our midst and shows us how to live, shows us how to every day be converted in mind and heart towards God, to love God with everything of all of my heart, all of my mind, all of my soul, all of my strength to love my neighbor as myself, to love myself right, to love my neighbor right, to love the world in right order. If we rush all the way to Christmas without the anticipation thereof, see what we're missing. See what we're missing. We need our Lord and our Savior. And this is why the prophet Isaiah ends that first reading with all of those other images that are painful to, to look at. He says, Yet, O Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay, and you the potter. We are the work of your hands. Let's offer our lives over to Jesus now in Advent to ask him to help us grow in his love, and to anticipate his arrival at Christmas as our Savior. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. 
He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and His kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We now bring our needs and our prayers before our Heavenly Father. For the Church of Jesus Christ throughout the world, for abundant grace in this holy season, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For civic leaders and public servants, for a heartfelt commitment to the common good, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the lonely, the lost, the poor and the sick, for hope, health, and healing, let us pray to the Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of their hands, for the grace of the Lord of His name, for our good and we pray, O Lord, these offerings we make, gathered from among your gifts to us. And may what you grant us to celebrate devoutly here below gain for us the prize of eternal redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. 
let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. similar way. When supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church. And recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints of whose constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Donald, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. 
and your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be. The Lord will bestow his bounty, and our earth shall yield its increase.
Let us pray. May these mysteries, O Lord, in which we have participated, profit us, we pray. For even now, as we walk amid passing things, you teach us by them to love the things of heaven and hold fast to what endures through Christ our Lord. Amen. So uh, during the Advent period, just a couple of things that might be helpful for you as you are desiring spiritual growth and a benefit for yourselves. Um, one of them is on, on the table in the entryway as you came in. These are the new missalettes for this time period, running now all the way up probably into uh, oh, February 16th, right up until after Valentine's Day. Um, so if you'd like <laughs> these books for the, the Sunday readings, uh, you're welcome to pick them up. They're in the entryway in the back of the church, and you can bring them back and forth to Mass with you, okay? If you lose it, you can always pick up a new one. Um, also, during Advent, our new Christmas book this year that we're giving out to all of the parishioners as a Christmas present, we thought you'd like it in advance so you can pray, it, uh, pray with it leading up to Christmas. This book uh, by Matthew Kelly called I Heard God Laugh. I Heard God Laugh. So nice, thin, little, mm, look how small it is. Nice thin little book there in the entryway in the back, as well as some of the books we've had from previous years in case uh, you are new to the parishes here or you would uh, like to pick up a copy of those old ones. So pick any of those books up and take them with you, other Advent books that are there in the back. Um, next weekend, we'll, we will have the library over at St. Anne's available for after Mass uh, next weekend if you'd want to head over there on Sunday in the afternoon or any time during the weekend and stop in to visit the library there to pick up spiritual reading. It should be uh, sanitary and sanitized and ready and everything to go next to it, okay? Um, also, starting this week on the 1st of December, we are doing a video series that you'll be able to find on our website and through our My Parish app and through whatever our Facebook page, all of our social media. So uh, if you'd like to do that, we're, we're reading one chapter a day of Luke's Gospel, each of the days leading up to Christmas. 24 chapters, 24 days from December 1st. Somebody that you know might be reading the first chapter. Mm. And it's different people reading each chapter every day, so you might want to check it out and see if you can follow along the video and do a little reflection prayer time with us on that. There's probably something else, but that's what I remember. Oh, confessions. Um, if you did not know, on Saturday evenings before Mass, I have been in that corner room in the back, right up here upstairs. Uh, it's usually open and unlocked there when, I'm, when, when the next person can come in. And uh, during Advent, I will be there from 3.30 onward up until Mass time on Saturday evenings here at this location. Okay, so you can come on Saturdays from 3.30 onward during Advent in order to be able to do confession. I've also, um, I'm gonna try on Tuesday nights during the month of uh, leading up to Christmas here on Tuesday nights, I'm gonna have an extra adoration and confession time at 7 or 6.30 p.m. Tuesday nights uh, over at the church at St. Anne's in the evenings there, provided nothing else is going on. I set up that just this afternoon, I set up that last time. So you can check the calendar for extra confession times, and we always got confessions available during adoration on Thursday nights down at Bertha, so that gives us all three locations, okay? The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in the peace of Christ.